This is Jamie from Stillmeyer Games. I'm here for game 49, round three. So we have Tapestry, A Feast for Odin, and Charterstone. Two polyomino realms together in the same round. I think that's only happened once before in the way that I randomized these realms. And Charterstone, a tough realm to complete. Tapestry, also a tough realm to complete. But uh, A Feast for Odin is a fairly generous realm. So we'll see if that works out, especially if we roll some sixes. Before we get started today, though, I have a surprise for you. Um, I was not expecting to reveal this today, but our convention coordinator, Dave, my coworker, had a good idea just yesterday that maybe, since we have some new Promo Realm promo packs coming up in the near future, scheduled for a May 31st reveal and release, um, but we have a convention here in St. Louis on uh, next week, Geekway to the West, that Geekway is probably a good time for us to sell things that people normally don't like to ship. Um, if they can avoid shipping them. So today I'm going to reveal to you the three new realms and a surprise that we will start selling at Geekway in person and then they will be on the web store as scheduled on May 31st. So you can anticipate what these are. Uh, you'll be able to see what they are next week, but I'm going to reveal the realms and what they look like today. So hey Chad, thank you for, for popping in today. Good to see you. The first realm that we have is Parks. We have a Rolling Realms Parks realm. Again, today I'm just going to show you the realms and what the packs look like. Um, but here is the uh, the Parks realm. This one is designed by Cameron Art and developed by Corel Tateka, as usual. Um, don't often say Corel's last name out, out loud, so Corel, hopefully I, I have not butchered that. Uh, and obviously also developed a little bit by me, but mainly Corel developed that one. Next up, we have Skulk Hollow. The Skulk Hollow Realm is designed by Eduardo Baraf um, and again, uh, and also Sebastian uh, Kozanir. Kozanir. Under the art is by Sebastian and Marius Petrescu. Marius does a lot of the art for our realms. So we have a Skulk Hollow Realm and then we have a Tricarian Realm. Tricarian. This one's designed by someone that you may have seen in the comments here. In fact, I just see Jonathan popped in here. Jonathan Hobson is the designer of this realm. And there's art by a couple different people. Vilo Farkas, Alasio Fejes, and Marius Petroscu as usual. So we have a Tricarian realm designed by someone who is often active here, which I love to see. Thank you, Jonathan, for, for being here and for designing the Tricarian realm. So here are the three new realms. I'm not going to reveal what they're all about today, just showing you what they look like so you can get excited about what they are. They will be on our web store on May 31st. And in person at Geekway, you can order them and just buy them at Geekway in person if you're there. But there's a surprise. There's one other thing that uh, that we've been holding a little secret. A lot of you have asked, can we do something else for solo players? People play Rolling Realms solo. And Morton, and I kind of challenged Morton to come up with something because uh, I wanted him to come up with something that could work with any promo realm in the future. And I don't even know if he fully pulled that off, but I'm pretty sure he got pretty close. What Morton created is called Beyond the Realmiverse. This is a replayable four chapter solo campaign. So it's a four chapter solo campaign, just a little mini solo campaign that you can use with any realms, any combination of realms. So it isn't realm specific as the mini golf solo mode is in the core box of Rolling Realms. Instead, you can mix and match pretty much anything together. Maybe there are some caveats about that, but the goal is to mix and match any combination of realms and replay as you wish this four game solo campaign. And so Morton and his team at Automa Factory designed this. I'm so excited about this. I know a lot of you play Roller Realms solo, solo. So this is kind of the big surprise here because so far we've only revealed, uh, all, only made promo packs based on a new game that go that gets incorporated into the game. But this is brand new, Beyond the Realmiverse, a four game solo campaign for Rolling Realms. I see some excitement here from Chad and Joshua. Uh, Jonathan's here. Congratulations again, Jonathan. Yeah, I am so excited to share these. Again, if you'll be at Geekway to the West next week, I'm filming this in on May 12th, 2023. So uh, if you're in the future, you may already have access to them. And they will be on our web store on May 31st. All right, let's jump into today's realms. And I'll leave these on the table just in case. Here we go. I'll leave them right over there. Tapestry, A Feast for Odin, Charterstone. You probably know these realms pretty well. Feast for Odin is the one, the, the newest of the common, of these three. For this one, you will select a shape, and unlike Tapestry, you'll cross off the shape unless you use a six. 
um, and then you don't have to cross it off. Six can use a, a shape that has or has not been used yet and you don't cross it off. And you'll put it down on one of these islands. You're trying to complete the islands, fill in the islands as much as possible. Let's jump right in. A six and a three. Six and a three. I love those sixes in the Feast for Odin. And I love early sixes in Tapestry too. Ooh, that's a tough choice. Is there any way? I, I doubt I can duplicate a realm that early. Actually, it's possible. Or duplicate a, a number. I think it is possible though because I can use the six right here. Just like that. To get two hearts and a pumpkin. And then I can use uh, the three over here in Charterstone, write down a six, get another heart, and use those three hearts right away to put a six over in Tapestry in one of the many sweet spots for sixes and get a coin out of it. Brian says, one of these new realms available. The new realms are available at Geekway to the West in person next week. That's why I'm revealing them a little bit earlier than expected. And then they will be available on our web store on May 31st. Joshua says he loves to follow along, even though he's normally at work for these live plays. And here's a three and a two. Chad says, I'm actually unboxing my new copy of My Little Side and Pie in the Sky. Awesome. Looking forward to, to uh, inching my wife into playing Scythe with me. That's a good way to do it. Yeah. Start out with my little scythe. I like it. Here is a three and a two. A three and a two. So careful planning is necessary in uh, over here. I like the two in Charter Stone. I also like the three in A Feast for Odin. Hmm. Let's go with. Let's go with the two in Charter Stone. I'll write down the three, get a pumpkin. And then I still need to use the three somewhere. Need to, again, be careful about where I want to put it over here. I need a three in the corner, I believe, right here. Yeah, right there. So I'll put the three here. There's a pumpkin. And I could use a one in A Feast for Odin if I want. In fact, it might be a little bit useful because there's two places in A Feast for Odin where I now need a very specific shape. Um, and I might want a two instead. So let's use a coin to replace a coin. So I'll use a coin there, right here, to get a coin right back. All right. Brian says this is actual first live viewing as well. That's awesome, Brian. I'm glad you're able to join us on this Friday, May 12th. Um, and thank you for your, your kind words. Thank you for uh, yeah, for being here, for being a part of the Stonemaier Games community. Five and a three. A lot of threes so far. Let's see if we can make that work. Actually, a three does work in a piece of road. I already know that. I like actually, yeah, let's do a five in Charter Stone. I like putting the same numbers in the crates if possible. So I gain a coin out of that. That's a five. Three, I know that I need a three and a Feast for Odin down here. So let's get a star and a coin. And now I have a bunch of coins that I could use in Tapestry. I think I, I know that I will need, I'm still, I always bet on sixes for Tapestry. I need sixes, although in this combination of realms, I need sixes and a Feast for Odin too. But I think I will put that one up in this corner. So I'll create a one, put it up in that corner. Nathan says, can't wait to catch up on round two and three on YouTube. And Nathan, if you missed it, go back and see. I revealed three new realms today. I'll recap them at the end in case anyone is popping in late. Ian is stopping in to watch as he doesn't have all expansion realms. Well, Ian, I also introduced three new... Oh, no, another three and a two. Um, three new promo realms today, Ian. If you go back... Where can I put these so people can see them? Here, I'll put them out right here so you can kind of see them a little bit better. There we go. That might help a little bit. Three and a two, again. That does not help with Charter Stone. Although with Charter Stone, I'll create a one, use that here, get a pumpkin, and then write down a three in the crate. So I haven't used the two or the three yet. I know I need, actually I need to cross off this three. I didn't use, I, didn't, I don't have to cross off this five because I used a six for that earlier. Now I know that I need a two in a Feast for Odin. So let's go ahead and cross off that two. Use that there and get a pumpkin. And a three, well this is actually a little tricky because again I know, okay that'll work, that'll work. I'll put the three up here and tapestry to get a coin. I think that works out. Two, three, one. I think we're good there. All right, we need to not roll a three and a two here. 
Give me some sixes. Four and a two. Four and a two. At least four is a different number, which is what I, I need for Charter Stone. Four and a two. Hmm. And I need two twos or a three and a one in tapestry and another one later on. I think, I, oh, I need I need the four in a couple of different places, unfortunately. Um, but I'm ahead of pace, I believe, in Charter Stone a little bit. So maybe I can, no, I do need, I need, I, I, I do have a lot to do in Charter Stone, actually. So let's put the four. I need to keep working on A Feast for Odin. So I'll put the four in A Feast for Odin and try to get some of those hearts back. I'll use this four right here, down there to get a pumpkin and a heart. That's the four. The two, I'll just commit to using a two. Um, I'll put the two down here in Tapestry. And in Charterstone, I, I don't, I, unfortunately I don't think there's anything I can do there. I could make a two and turn it into a three and use that in Charter Stone. I don't know if that's worth it though, but with only four turns left after this, one, two, yeah, I have just enough turns to finish it off. Brian says, once there are enough Stillmire Realms that are not included in the base game, would you do a second base or keep all the promos? We'll probably keep it going with promos, uh, Brian, uh, just because it's easy to release one new promo realm and ship it along with uh, the new version or the new game to go along with that. We. Yeah, so that's the plan right now, at least. Turn six. There's a six, a five, and a six. I like what we're seeing there. Maybe we can make some stuff happen. Um, Ian says, I got on just as you were showing Beyond the Realm of Verse and had to look at the previous ones. He said, very excited for Parks as I own the core game. Haven't heard of the other two, Skull Hollow and, uh, and Tricarian. Tricarian's a pretty heavy Euro game, nicely thematic Euro game. Skull Hollow is a fun, asymmetric two-player game. And he says, a bit of an odd topic, but I learned Libertario wins a Gilchrist last week, and it was a huge hit for my solo gaming. I'm glad to hear that. That's awesome. Um, that was designed by the same team that did Beyond the Realm of Earth over here. He says, I also took a set of realms into my school desk this week for when I have breaks throughout the day. That's awesome, man. I'm glad. Yeah, it's a nice little break game because it's just, you know, when you're playing by yourself, it's maybe 10 minutes at most. Five and a six. I desperately need those numbers. I think I'll use the six in Tapestry, though. I've been waiting for that six. And which way do I want do I want to go? I almost feel like I need the hearts more at this point. Let's go hearts then. There we go. Get another heart. And then the five, if I can get another heart out of the five, then I could copy the six. Although I almost want to write a four down there. Hmm. Mm hmm. So if I use if I turn that five into a four, yeah, that's a little tricky. Charter Stone is a tricky one. You don't know what you're going to roll. So but I, I'll keep going for Feast of Rodent. It is the more generous of the two realms. Although, and over here, I could copy that, copy that six. Could be pretty good. I'll go with that. I'll turn that five into a four. Put it here, get another heart, write down the six down there. I will now spend three hearts to copy that six and use any shape that I want over here in A Feast for Odin. I'll go with, I think this is the right shape at the right time. I'll go with this shape. That's a star and a coin. Star, oh, and I've completed two of the other islands. And a coin, okay. Big turn there. Hopefully that big move will, will pay off. Three turns to go. Double sixes. <laughs> yeah, that is exactly, exactly what we needed. That is awesome. Wow. Okay. Can we fully leverage it? I, I don't know if I have the hearts to fully leverage it, but, uh, but it's good. It's good either way. So here's a six. There's a six right there. Get a pumpkin and a coin. Pumpkin and a coin. Got the six for tapestry. That was huge. I have the six for charter stone too. Get to put another six down below. I think this is the way to go. Get another coin. 
And now we're set up for Charterstone for the final uh, two turns. Two turns. Hopefully I haven't missed that. Two turns there to write, to get threes and sixes to potentially complete Charterstone, a rarity in this game. And now what else do we do? How do we, how do we top that? Uh, in a Feast for Odin, I know at some point, ideally I'd, ha I'd have a four. Hmm. Could be a little harder than I thought, actually. Yeah, Feast for Odin, I almost need a couple different numbers down there. I need, uh, hmm. Maybe a three and a three, but I, I need to get them through sixes. So I will just give myself a little boost with a Feast for Odin and just use a one. Do I want to use? Yeah, I'll go ahead. I'll create a one and a Feast for Odin. I'll use my one onesie to get this star. Just in case I can't finish off everything else in a Feast for Odin. All right, threes and sixes and maybe fours and twos and ones. I need a lot of numbers here. There's a three, three and a five. Three and a five. So the three I needed over in Charterstone. So here is one, two, three for Charterstone. That's three stars. Although I could have used the five too. That that might be, hmm. I might reverse that. Let me think about it for a second. Because the five could become a six. I don't know if I'll roll anything close to a six on my final roll. But maybe I can bet on it. Maybe I can push my luck a little bit. That's the three for now. The five... Yeah, I can't really, because I can't really do much for a five in a Feast for Odin. Unless I turn it into a six. And then I might as well just use a three anyway. Yeah, so I'm going to reverse this. I'm going to turn that five into a six and use it over in Charterstone. So that five, I need to manipulate it into a six. Same number of stars. I'm going to use the three in a Feast for Odin using this shape. Get another heart. And over in Tapestry, I think I'll get another heart. I'll use a one to get another heart right there. All right, final turn. If you're playing along live, let me know what you need here. I need a six for a Feast for Odin. I need a three for Charterstone, and I need a two for Tapestry. So I need a two, three, and a six. But I'm only rolling two dice, so... A pair of fives. Not at all what we needed here. A pair of fives. Ooh, that's going to sting a bit. Yeah, that's rough. That's rough. That's a, that's a rough final roll. Um, I mean, I can create a two to finish off Tapestry. That's worth two stars. I can turn a five into a six to finish off a Feast for Odin. Leaves me a little short on Charterstone which is three stars. So it might be more worth more worth it to do Charterstone. Um, oh, that's a tough choice. So two stars for Tapestry. I get, okay, so I can create a two value, but I'm not getting any resources from Charterstone. Hmm. I don't think there's a good way to do this, unfortunately. I think it's one or the other. Um, oh man, I want to finish Charter Sim so badly. I could do it, but I just have to, uh, oh, Jonathan says he can't use the five or the six in his final turn. That's true. I can't use the five in Charter Stone. I can't use it in a Feast for Odin. I can't use it in Tapestry. Jonathan, you're right. This is a circumstance where if you can't use a number, you can get a resource instead. And a resource is exactly what I need, but you have to commit to not using it. So if I'm saying I'm not using this five, which resource do I want out of it? Um, not a heart. A coin or a pumpkin is what I need. So I will go, I will do that. I will turn this five into a coin. I will now use two coins, or really it could just be three, three coins to get this three. Finish off Charter Stone. Now I can use, I still can't use this five. I, I, I don't think anything will happen with that five. Um, but I think it's worth the two stars in Tapestry. This one coin will turn into a two to finish off Tapestry to get all six stars down there, get another heart. And finally, I have not used this five. 
but I would need two pumpkins to manipulate. I'm actually very, very close, but I would need two pumpkins to manipulate that into a six. I don't have two pumpkins, unfortunately. So that five will, will just become a random resource at the end. And we're done. 17.5 for me. Fun round. Wow, rolling those two sixes was a high and then a little little low there to get those two fives. Although maybe that flexibility of those bonus resources helped some people. Let me know what you scored in the comments below. I had a 17.5 if you want to compare it to my score. Thank you all for joining in and playing today. This was a fun one to, to play along with you and to re reveal the new realms, again, that will be at Geekway to the West. We have Parks, Skulk Hollow, and Tricarian. And as along with a replayable four-game solo campaign beyond the Realm of Earth that is playable with any assortment and any randomization of realms. Um, and again, this isn't normally something that we do. So we don't normally sell something at a convention first, but the plan was just to release them on May 31st through a web store. We're doing it just a little bit early here because we happen to have Geekway to the West coming up. And you might ask, why don't we also re re uh, release it on the web store at the same time? And it's a fair question, but uh, it's just because we, we have everything set up and planned to go on May 31st for our e-newsletter. So we'll just wait until then to do it. Thank you all for joining me today. Uh, Jonathan says he had a, and congratulations again to Jonathan, the designer of the Tricarian Realm. Jonathan says he finished with a 15.6 in round three. Well done, 48.6 for all three rounds. That's a great finish, Jonathan. And Chad says, thanks for the awesome news. Have, have a good day. I hope you all have a great weekend, some fun games to play this weekend. And I'll see you in a few weeks for the awesome, the, uh, the highly anticipated Game 50, where I get to play Realms that you designed. I'll see you then. Bye.